Hey, you dorks, this is Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you are listening to The Dorkening. Hi, I'm Brian Johnson, and although you probably accidentally stumbled across it and have no idea why you're watching it, you are in fact watching The Dorkening. Hello, this is Tom Kenny, voice actor. The voice of the Ice King on Adventure Time. And SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, Gary the Snail, too. Hey, guess what you're filling your eye holes and ear holes with? The Dorkening! Oh, I love the Dorkening. Very popular in Ooh. And Bikini Bottom. Hi, I'm Lou Ferrigno. You're watching The Dorkening. And you know what? You don't like me when I get angry, so don't get me angry. You better keep watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, this is Felissa Rose, and you're watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, it's Courtney Palm. We're shooting Death House, and you're watching The Dorkening. This is Anthony Michael Hall, and you're watching The Dorkening. Stay tuned, my friends are going to show you what entertainment's all about, baby. The Dorkening. <laughs> The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <coughs> it's scary. Hey, hey, welcome to Creative Spotlight, powered by the Dorkening Podcast Network. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard. Happy Monday. I hope everybody is having an awesome start of the week. I know we are. And uh, with us, as always, Philip, how's it going, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing all right, Leo. Uh, thanks for having me uh, co-host again. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, your family, my friend. And uh, a new face, Brandon. How's it going? No, it's it's the same face, but... I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> uh, doing great. Doing great. Filling in for Patsy, which uh, is, is becoming a big movie guy, working in the movies, which is awesome. We're very happy for him. Indeed. Totally. Uh, and I'm very happy to tell you about we have an awesome movie we're going to be talking about tonight. The movie is Demigod, and uh, we're going to be playing a trail a little shortly, but I do have information showing us up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And we have two fine individuals uh, we're talking with tonight is a director and actor, Miles Doliak. How's it going? I'm very well, Leo. How are you? Happy to be back on the Dorkening where we can swear. Oh, totally. And uh, I believe last time we had you on was Hollowed Ground. Also, Demons was amazing as well. Just your lineup of movies, absolutely love. And uh, you brought somebody along with you, Mr. Jeremy London. You may know from Mall Rats and also Demigod, a party of five. How's it going, sir? Good, 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 man. I'm uh, glad to be here. Glad to be here. Oh, glad to have you. Yeah. So uh, tell us about Demigod. I, I know we all watched it, but uh, why don't you give us the, the synopsis, Miles? Well, Demigod is the story of Robin, uh, who travels with her husband, Leo, to her birthplace in the Black Forest of Germany because her grandfather, Carl, played by the amazing Jeremy London, has just passed away and left her all of his worldly belongings. Now, Robin had a complicated relationship with her grandfather, but somehow feels compelled to return to her birthplace in Carl's cabin, where she finds out that the inheritance left her is far more macabre than she bargained for and that entails falling in with the cult of the nature deity the awesome Karanunos and his priestesses 
and all will not go well for our hero couple. No, no. Uh, well, we, we definitely want to, don't want to spoil anything. Uh, now, where was this film? Did you film? Uh, where was it on location? Well, the Black Forest, Germany, of course. No, I'm yes. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> of course, our little indie band just traveled right across the pond, and we made it happen. No, uh, we shot this in Lumberton, Mississippi, at Little, Gla little Black Creek Campground and Park. Now, fortunately, the... Piney Woods of Mississippi shares a penchant for evergreens with the Black Forest of Germany. So you do see a lot of pine trees, spruce, fir, that sort of thing in the Black Forest. So it's actually a, a, a pretty close approximation uh, we were able to land right there in Mississippi. Now, uh, I have a question for you. Um, being a co-writer of the, of the film and screen, screenplay, um, how, how did you come up with uh, the Black Forest as the the setting have you actually been there and 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 was there something about it that that made you uh consider it as as basically the setting i i have spent some time in germany munich germany in particular um i have not trekked the black forest per se but the mythos of the black forest is utterly fascinating begin beginning with these wild hunt myths that revolve around the god herney uh whose name is uh, cognatic with kernunos who is uh, uh Gallo-Celtic deity with some um, little tentacles into the Roman cult of Dispater, the underworld god. Uh, so very much wanted to center the narrative around the Black Forest, which is just, uh, if you read the lore, one of the spookiest places on the planet. Wow. Yeah, no, no matter how much chocolate cake comes out of it. <laughs> and it just sounds cooler than Mississippi, let's just face it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It would have made less sense of me speaking German the whole time if we were still in Mississippi. That would just be... yeah. That was impressive, fun. though. I I honestly have to say when I was watching it. I mean, not this. I don't think like that's a spoiler. It takes place in Germany, right? So. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, when, when you were just spouting off German the whole time, I was like, oh, oh, did he did he learn how to do that phonetically? I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. I, honest to God. Like even my my wife was sitting there. She was like, this. Does he speak German? I'm like, he sure does in this movie. So everybody did. Everybody did a good job. I believe we had a really, a really good dialect coach and uh, uh, tried to just mimic as much as possible. And then hey. kind of, you know, uh, pretend we knew what we were saying. But it was certainly kind of, you know, in, you know, flat. It, it was it, it was a, a, a cram session to learn a, a language and, and to make sure that we, we served it justice and didn't. Uh, sound like somebody that was trying to do an accent and trying to so it's, it's incredibly important to to really be that you know if you're going to be in the black forest you need to be german and so it wasn't just uh, learning lines which is was very bizarre and different uh, than anything I'm, i've ever been used you know that i've ever done before uh but but just you know making sure that you say them in the right way so that they they um, that they make sense you know yeah well, yeah. I mean, but did you at least believe what you're saying? You know. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, between between you speaking in German and you speaking with the German accent in English, uh, honestly, it was it was wunderbar. Great job. Good. Like, good. It was uh, yeah, good. Good. yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. I uh, I that means a great deal to me. Um, and Jeremy and the other members of our cast yeah. were really game. They dove in with both feet. Uh, they all had a, a kind of facility with the language, which uh, I was really impressed with. We wanted the, the German, of course, for authenticity, but at the same time uh, to further isolate our hero couple, who, of course, doesn't speak German. Robin, played by the wonderful Rachel Nichols, she remembers a little bit from her childhood, but they're literally strangers in a strange land. And so these characters start speaking to them in German, which, which alienates them and, and sort of pushes them uh, further on, uh, into the margins of this terrifying situation, and and so that was a big sort of character and story story point we wanted to embrace. No, it was well, done it, well. It, yeah, it, it, and it definitely added atmosphere to it as well because you're using Rachel as that like focal point. You know, everybody else is is you know speaking German around here, but you know they need to translate for her, and it's just yeah, it definitely added you know just a, just a, a I don't want to say say darkness, but definitely a, a uh, atmosphere around the whole event, especially you know. To, there's an authenticity yeah. to it, and, exactly. and sort of a, I, th I think just you know. It, well, the it, language, the language too has yeah, it, it has that? this 
I was just going to say the, the German language has this this energy and 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 dramatic quality and power. Uh, I think, and and we, I mean, there there was there is a creep factor. Certainly, if you're coming uh, to it from as a native English speaker, and and you're hearing this this foreign this sort of almost militaristic kind of language, um, it 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 casts a kind of spell. I think that that was. That, that really worked well for what we were trying to convey. And shout out, by the way, to our, our dialect coach, Oliver Hoffer, um, and to Elena Sanchez, who um, played Latara in the film, is also a native German speaker and wound up doing double duty on set, um, coaching us uh, uh, not only the language itself, but, but when we were speaking English with a German dialect. But we couldn't have done it without either Ali or Elena. Nice. Yeah. I didn't realize that I did that. Great. Very cool. Yeah. How about that? Now, uh, Jeremy, how did, how did you get involved uh, with, with the film? Uh, have you worked with uh, Miles before, or, or was there a. Yeah, I, um, I, I, yes, I've been, you know, I've been lucky enough to be in, been, uh, make a little cameo in uh, his movie, uh, uh, The Dinner Party. And I've just get, been, I've been blessed to become friends with he, he and Lindsay, for, uh, him and Lindsay for, you know, just over the last few years and just being in Mississippi and uh, being in, you know, sort of, it's a, it's a relatively small uh, uh, film community down here. And, uh, and, and there's, there are a few that you, you know, that you can get into down here that are just not very good. And, and, and miles uh, <laughs> happens to be the, the, I believe the best filmmaker down here. And, uh, and uh, you know, not only was it an honor for me to get in there with them, but they're just, really really good people too and so our the work experience is, is uh, valuable to me as the quality of the movie i always i always knew would know with mike miles that the movie is going to be really good and it's going to be interesting and it's going to be something different and he's given me different you know these challenges i mean i'm on, in the dinner party are very very small amount but the, the little bit that i'm in there is really remember it's a, a real different character it's complete creep but it's a uh, you know really just different than than the other opportunities that i normally get as an actor and so uh, miles has opened that up for me and so i've just you know uh uh been blessed to be able to be a part of their their uh, their world and uh, i think that it's just gonna get bigger and better you know uh, totally yeah i mean blessed uh, to have you my friend appreciate thank you, that. my friend uh, I said in in the beginning, you know, we we love everything that you've done, Miles, so far. Just uh, and, and we, you know, the, a lot of people complain about, you know, it's it's uh, always sequels and, and you know remakes and everything, but you know, dealing with with indie cinema, that's where you really get the heart and true, you know, really uh, unique storylines, you know, uh, and that's where you can get some incredible talent as well. Yeah, I, I mean, good, I... yeah, Jeremy. No, no I, just, I, I, I think that the, his uh, approach to, to, to making unique but really good movies uh, sets him apart from a lot of people that are just trying to make money uh, by making a slasher movie or whatever, you know, uh, showing, you know, pretty naked girls or whatever they think it takes. There's, you know, it's uh, his his phd shines through his uh, his storytelling which is uh, you know always there's a historic fun element uh, a mythological uh lesson to be learned uh, which is always fun with miles you know stuff that i didn't know about before so it's you know always a, it's fun to learn that stuff and be a part of it as well and know that it comes from something not just uh the need to scare somebody or the need to be a slasher for slasher sake that kind of thing Well, <laughs> just got eerily quiet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, sorry, so, I, I was, I actually, I was managing I, the comment here. No, 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 that's quite all right, Leo. Um, I was, I was actually going to say, um, I was, I was actually very, uh, very impressed altogether with the originality of what I was seeing uh, while watching the movie. Um, it, it wasn't, there was nothing that I could have anticipated coming through. And I, like, I'm a, I'm a huge movie nerd, so uh, my wife won't watch mysteries with me because I'm seven minutes into anything and i'm like oh so they did it got it yeah you know, it just ruins it for yeah. um not me because that's how i get my jellies but i digress mm -hmm. um, however while watching this uh i was i was sitting there and i was just like i i genuinely have no idea 
like what the end game is going to be like is she gonna join them is, is this gonna is this gonna happen and so on you know i don't want to get into spoiler territory but um not only that when we finally get into the nitty-gritty of it uh there was stuff about the the god the deity that i was genuinely impressed by just from a design standpoint um it looked great yeah, huh? yeah it looked yeah, great and uh there was one thing everything. being the god of of the the woods and in the in the hunt uh there was just and i'm not going to state it because anybody that wants to see this movie i don't you know you should you should witness it uh but there was one feature that when i saw it my my wife and i would kind of like she you know she looked she was like i that's a little i don't get that and i was like i think it makes perfect sense <laughs> for exactly what this deity is supposed to be like especially when you think about if it if it reflects modern times like as mm. as it grows older yeah perfect absolutely perfect it's just one it's a particular feature that this creature in uh uses in at, at, in the dark i'll say yeah, and well, uh, that, yeah. that that means a great deal brandon i think i know what you're talking about and and we were a little concerned about that choice um we were shooting uh anamorphic widescreen and we knew what that choice would do for us in that world in mm -hmm. terms of flair um uh, and just just cinematic power, right? And visual aesthetic. It was good. But at the same time, we were a little we 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 didn't know if we wanted to make the choice because of Ternuno's age and lineage and connection to the the ancient late antique world. But but we came to the exact conclusion you just articulated, which is he evolves. Exactly. With, that know, was my as, takeaway. Right. Right. So um, so I'm really glad that that yeah so if that's what you yeah, were thinking yeah. it yeah. translated because yeah, awesome. that, that was exactly what i picked up and explained right away and, and not that not that my wife was sitting there you know really scratching her head on she was just kind of for a split second thrown off by it and i was like no i get it it's got to yeah. be a lot of cerebral there's a, there's a cerebral aspect to what's going on that yeah sure but but it means no. a great deal for you that, that you say the design because that stuff is at on an indie budget is very very tricky and difficult to pull off yes. and we had a we had great production uh design department uh, Ju julie tosh uh my amazing wife and collaborator uh lindsey ann williams who designed the costumes and ashley treadaway the makeup department head and and those three women collectively um they they are basically responsible for the look of ternunos uh, you know putting their heads together and putting their limited resources together and and making this happen and then of course the the imposing presence that is chima chekwa um so it, you know it's it's you can't buy your way the the snazziest, fanciest, most brilliant in design. Uh, you you got to be innovative and you've got to be creative and 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 that team was exactly that. I let me, let me ask you: these uh, lower budget movies, you're sort of forced to be you know uh, more organic with with effects and stuff like that, which I think are, is better anyway. You're not relying on a digital. Uh, reprocessing of a character and making the character uh, talk and all of that stuff. Uh, just all of these things to me that just sort of take away uh, the sort of the, the authentic feel of, of kind of what I really loved about old movies, you know, when they had mm. to be practical. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, it, so. I, yeah. And totally with, with digital, you know, it, it's uh, it can definitely be that fine line of like, you know, looks awesome or looks totally crappy, you know, or practical, yeah. you know, you, you definitely have to be like everybody said, innovative. I, I do have the trailer and Jeremy, I know you do have uh, limited time. So I want to make sure we get a couple questions in and uh, Philip, I know you had a question as well. Uh, we're going to play the trailer and when we get back, uh, we'll be talking good. More. Here we go. Right. How long since you saw him last? The day we left, I was six, maybe seven. Well, definitely doesn't skip on the ambiance. Why did we even come here? Because he left you everything such as it is. You have to mean something to him, right? What are you doing here? Visitor. We're, 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 we're visiting. You don't know the tales? Yeah. What tales? Just another one of Grandpa's scary stories told after too much whiskey. The winter solstice comes, the great hunt has begun. His arrow, sword, and knives, the supreme hunter consumes his lives. Okay, I don't believe it. Any of it. 
The prayer never believes until your skin hangs on his wall, until you witness his might. There we go. Demigod, I got information in show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Now, uh, Demigod, is it available on VOD as of, uh, is it coming out soon or, or is it out right now? October 15th. October 15th. Uh, in select theaters and on demand. Yes, very sir. cool. Very cool. And uh, Philip, I know you had a question before we went to uh, trailer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Miles, you mentioned, you know, how, how um, you know, in any film you had to find a location that looked really good and whatnot. Um, do, do you, did you have like a location person that went out and, and searched for, for this awesome environment that, that you had as a replacement for the Black Forest? Uh, no, sir. Thank you, Justin. Uh, your comment about the score, it's Clifton Hyde, my great friend and longtime collaborator, Clifton Hyde on, on the score. Um, uh, the location manager was me and Lindsay and, uh, and Wesley O'Mary and the producers, Jim Bullion. Um, we knew we wanted to shoot Mississippi. I think Mississippi has the best film incentive rebate program in the country. It's also my home state. Um, we shot six Mine features too. there. Yeah, Jeremy too. Uh, hey. it's my, I should say I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, but I was born in Mississippi. Um, so we, we knew we wanted to shoot there. We scouted several uh, woodland areas and parks, uh, one in Grenada, Mississippi. But Hattiesburg is, is my production company's home base. And so Lumberton is 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 somewhat close to Hattiesburg, 40 or 50 minutes away. Um, so when we stumbled upon Little Black Creek and Jordan Nettles, the owner of that property, uh, was keen to have our movie shoot there, we we knew it was the place for us. It also afforded us the ability to sequester our entire cast and crew in the cabins there on that mm -hmm. site, which with COVID going on was a very important uh, thing to us. We wanted to be in sort of a, a bubble, if you will. So, so you guys uh, know Brett Favre? He's from Hattiesburg, right? I, I, yes, I, I know <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> uh, Damn it. <laughs> I know his work. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> oh, man. I even been to the Favre compound. Sorry, Ooh, Brett. Just, Brett, sorry, I'm just yanking your chin. <laughs> so, Brett, Brett did a... Did a uh, uh, PSA for us for a for a dog park. We were trying to raise money for a dog park several years ago, and Brett was kind enough to uh, lend us a few minutes of his of his time, provided we come out to the compound to shoot it. So we did. Very nice. Appreciate. appreciate Brett us out. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty <laughs> I, awesome. I just wanted to bring up real quick. Uh, so Jeremy, you have London Arts Acting Studio. Yeah, London Arts Acting School, London Arts Acting Studio, either one. Uh, I just right now, you know, we mostly have like uh, do it over Zoom or whatever. But whenever uh, life is normal and when it was normal, uh, you know, we would uh, you know, have got bounce around all over the place. So from down from the Gulf Coast here, Mississippi, uh, New Orleans, uh, Pensacola, Memphis, uh, all over the place. Uh, but uh, we have some incredibly talented uh, uh, students and it's been it's a, a unique opportunity down here in Mississippi for, to to be a part of uh, the filmmaking community down here because not only get, do I get a lot of really great students and a lot of access to a lot of great talent and get to mold mold a lot of great talent, but uh, we get these wonderful opportunities to actually put them in movies. I'm in producing and directing and co-directing a movie right now called uh, Interfere and. 75% of the cast are my students, you know, and so that's a, it's been a, a, a really cool, unique opportunity to be able to do something uh, like that, that some, I never would have had an opportunity to do something like that in Los Angeles, you know, and so just being down here, not only do I get to, uh, did the universe align me with this wonderful gentleman, uh, Mr. Doliak and, uh, and uh, his lovely wife, uh, Lindsay, and, and just the whole team, uh, but uh there is there's a unique uh, a fabric of, of artists down here that are very real and 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 they're like little diamonds in the rough gem, gems that you know 
I, it's 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 just been it's 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 a unique movie, uh, just atmosphere down here. Uh, and and I, I think, think it's growing, yeah. growing. It's not, it's, 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 yeah. it sounds like it fosters like a, a more creative environment it altogether. Does. Like you would be stifled otherwise. Does that does that sound accurate? Because I think that and, and 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 for me, it's. I mean, look, there's Mississippi. Of course, is not without its share of of problems, both current and historical. Uh, right. But when you think of the artists that arose out of the state of Mississippi from Tennessee Williams to Eudora Welty to William Faulkner to Elvis oh, Presley to, I mean, Leontine Le Price, I, I mean, the, the James Earl Jones. Morgan uh, Freeman, right? Morgan Freeman, Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, yeah, uh, Robert yeah, Johnson. Howlin'. I, I mean, the, the list it's is It's here. Goes, There's a soul here. There's a soul. Yeah, it just goes on and on and on. And, yeah, and a history and you feel it. And you yeah. have an obligation to want to uh, let the rest of the world see it for the good parts. <laughs> you know, uh, the historic uh, um, sort of stuff is going to always be there, but it doesn't mean that that's got to always uh, be what they have to uh, it tie itself to. You know, I think there's a lot of beauty here and a lot of really good artists. I mean, I had to come to Mississippi to land a role where I speak Germany, Germ German, German, German. The whole time I, 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 I I've never spoke another language in another movie, but I come to Mississippi to speak German. I mean, like, that's so weird, you know. But it shows that there's a lot more culture here than maybe people might uh, might not realize, you know. But it does go back to the the depths of like the root, the roots of the blues and all of the 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 great literary the literature that's come out of here and stuff like that. So yeah, William Faulkner, the best yeah. author ever, best author. Yeah. Ever. I mean, arguably the greatest American novelist, Faulkner, the greatest American playwright. Howard Wolf is writer. awesome. The, I mean, the greatest American short story writer, maybe arguably Eudora Welty. I mean, blues artists, you name it, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, BB King. But I mean, look, there is in, in the, in, G great art is often born out of pain and conflict and complexity. Mm. And and darkness and and um, Mississippi has all those things to you know the furthest exponential degree, um, <laughs> but in those things people have found beauty and and ideas and 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 they have made sense of of suffering um, and and you know I. I I mean, the same is true as where I live in the city of New Orleans. It's the most, mm -hmm. it's the most beautiful and complicated and, and place in the whole world, you know. And I just, and and there's, I mean, I think there's a reason that Tennessee wound up coming here and writing Streetcar Named Desire here, you know. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, I'm so glad that you know Jeremy said what he said about fostering young artists, and that's a place where he and I really find a kind of kinship because we're 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 both about, and Jeremy has had a much longer and more storied career than I, but I think we both feel very strongly about providing opportunities for young artists and, and letting them know you don't have to go to Los Angeles or New York anymore. Um, there's a, there's the, the ability here, there's a scene here, there are opportunities here. And if you're, if, if you bring your, your energy and your talent and your, who you are to the table, um, there's a place for you uh, in what we're doing. That's excellent. That yeah. is outstanding. Well, I consider it my social responsibility as a teacher to make sure that I veer people away from making, even going to, thinking about going to Los Angeles yeah. if they want to be in this industry. It's not there anymore. It's yeah. it's down here. It's in New Orleans and Atlanta, and and it's it's just it's not in Los Angeles. The you know, and you because you and you disappear out there, and it eats your soul. You know, I mean, I had to get out of Los Angeles to get back to just feeling connected again to actual reality because it's just so it's such a weird bubble i've and, i've heard uh, i've heard that yeah. one, one of my friends who went out there and then made their way back uh one of the things that they said that kind of always stuck with me is you know so many people go out there to act and then you realize that it never actually stops once they leave a set it's just constant trying to be and pretend that you are somebody else 100 percent it's easy to get lost in that, I would imagine. Well, there's no such thing as collaboration out there. Everything it's doggy dog, and nobody really wants to support anybody else. And so you really become quite isolated in in sort of 
who your friend base is because you're basically in competition with everybody. And everybody mm-hmm. really does. They, they hate you for your success. And then, uh, uh, then, uh, you know, it's, it, everybody wants to charge you an arm and a leg if you want to shoot in their property or whatever down here, you have people offering their properties to shoot on. You have actors willing to work for free to be a part of something special. Uh, even though we, you know, try not to ever do that, but you know, the, the fact is, is you, there's no way no anybody would ever consider that in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Down here, people actually do it because they love it. And it's really a wonderful uh, thing for me, you know, having been, you know, working for studios for 25 years, I, I, it becomes such a business and impersonal and all about money and, you know, ad space and all that stuff, you know, actually coming to a community of artists that actually do it because they love it and they, they do it for the right reasons. And, and they're always being creative together. It's, it's unique. It's unique. That's awesome. Totally. Uh, I want to remind everybody and Jeremy, I know you do have limited time. I uh, definitely check the show notes up above or down below, uh, depending on where you're watching or listening to us uh, to find out more about Miles and Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan and I just got to know, you know, before you head on out. Uh, uh, any question you want, man. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, Twilight of the Mall Rats. Uh, it, it's, I know Kevin just finished filming Clerks 3. Uh, any discussion? I, I, you probably can't say too much about it, but man, I, I tell you what, you brought, you guys probably know as much as I do about it at this point. It's, it's, I know it's there, and he wants to make it. I think his funding came through for Clerks first, but I, you know, I, I think that we're all just waiting for the ner- the world to somewhat get back to normal, and I, I think we're, we're we're catching whatever freaking flies by in the wind at the moment, moment you know, <laughs> and we're happy just to be out and being creative and stuff like that, and so. I think the clerks thing happened for him uh, uh, sooner. Um, and I'm hoping that that's just, you know, his next endeavor. I know he wants to do it. I yeah, know I, that his, his heart's in the right place. It's finished. It's ready to go. So. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Universal tries to pull the trigger on that. Soon. Like you said, there's a sense of normalcy because, I mean, at this stage in the game, like so many studios and what have you, they are weaponizing as much nostalgia as possible. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, I can tell you, if it gets made, it won't be Universal making it. They didn't oh, make, yeah, it. But, but, they didn't but make they, any money the first time. They're not going to give it up any money. But they, you oh, know, they feel somebody over there twirling their invisible mustache. Yeah. I guarantee <laughs> it. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know? I think that's uh, been another holdup. I think just getting sort of some of the ownership back from 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 Universal for Kevin uh, for his own property has been a bit of the sort of the struggle as well. And I don't know where that stands right now. Um, but I, you know, I know that we were set to go at one point and then COVID happened. And so we all know what happened there. Um, and hopefully it just, hopefully that this will all cycle out eventually and we'll get back to it. But, you know, who knows? fingers crossed, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. totally. I don't put any eggs in that basket, man. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't. I was never really expecting it to in the first place. So I'll be down here making fun movies with Miles Doliak. Yeah, I, I'll give Jeremy <laughs> plenty of work down here. So I, was, I won't be able to pay him like Universal, but we'll yeah. have a good time. <laughs> it'll, it'll still be an it's a trade-off and fun, though. You'll enjoy yeah. yourself a lot. That's more what I said. It, yeah. yeah, that'll all come. Miles is going to be a huge filmmaker. I'm not worried about it. Oh, totally. And then, and then I'm going to make him. Um, sign a lifetime contract to me and use me in all his movies. <laughs> I'm, I'm the janitor. <laughs> Why is every role played by Jeremy London? Right? Yes. Contracts, I'm locked in. <laughs> Was grandma played by, played by Jeremy London? We didn't have any other roles. We had no other roles. We're contractually obligated to him. That might be a story <laughs> idea. Sounds like a Charlie Kaufman film. Right. <laughs> every role is Jeremy London. Right. Oh. Then, <laughs> well, then have, I, I then have Jeremy London as a character. I, I wouldn't even want to see that. Someone else play him. <laughs> oh, that would be. I'd feel like I was on like a really bad acid trip and be like, make it stop, <laughs> make it stop. <laughs> uh, Last question I'll, I'll leave you with, unless anybody had uh, anything else. Uh, what, what's your uh, what, what's a favorite memory from uh, from filming Mall Rats? Uh, my favorite memories, uh, favorite memory was is is all of us getting together uh, at the end of the workday, which was for us was about like eight o'clock in the morning, and hit all of us like hitting the hot tub together and hanging out and just playing music and and 
getting to actually know each other and that kind of stuff. It was the offset. It was the offset moments that were far more uh, memorable for me than the onset moments. You know, we were filming from eight o'clock at night until eight o'clock in the morning for months, and we were spent, man. We didn't see any. We literally didn't see night for almost two months. We would go in and the sun would be up and we'd get up and the sun would be up. I mean, we'd get out and the sun would be up and we'd be in a mall and fluorescent lighting all night, 12 hours shooting and trying to be funny. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so I worked years uh, a lot of the shooting under was fluorescent a, light. It's hard being on. funny after five minutes. Dude, it's, I'm telling you, a lot of the shooting was a blur because we were exhausted, man. And we had rehearsed the scenes for weeks and weeks. And so nothing was funny anymore, really, to us, which is probably what makes it, you know, work ultimately and feel more organic. But, you know, you all of a sudden you're doing things that you're really not sure if it's funny anymore. And you're exhausted and grumpy. And like nobody's really, really connecting other than just getting, you know, whatever between action and cut, you know. Everybody's tired and going to their, their dressing rooms <laughs> and stuff, you know. Yeah, sun's but, up, time to go. <laughs> yeah, it, they were long days, man. They were long days. Well, it's wow. nice to hear that the camaraderie, though, was, yeah. was one of the yeah. best parts of oh, it. Cause I've, heard, I've heard horror stories about ensembles, and yeah. that's that's one for the wind column as far as I, I've ever heard. Well, there yeah, were a indeed. few people that excluded themselves from the circle, and, and they, they're, they're the ones that lost out, period. It's the way uh, it always not, goes, too. Not the experience for me, but man, when I did Gods and Generals, I did the Civil War movie at Gods and Generals with Robert Duvall and Jeff Daniels and Stephen Lang and C. Thomas Howell and all these huge actors, and they were putting all of, and I was included with them in this, the group of actors that they were putting up at the the nicest, like bed and breakfast and the nicest hotels and all of that stuff uh, away from the rest of the cast and the rest of the crew who were all staying like at the Shoney's Inn or something like that, you know? And uh, I actually gave my room to one of the actresses and I swapped rooms and I stayed at the Shoney's with everybody else because I knew that it would be a lot more fun and I would connect <laughs> with those people a lot more. <laughs> so I, stood, I did. I stayed with the crew at the Shoney's rather than the freaking bed and breakfast with Robert Duvall because it was just weird. <laughs> like I'm sitting down and Boo Radley's eating eggs and bacon next to me. It's hey, so, hey, uh, Tom, hey, Tom so Hagen, man. Really pretentious, honestly. It just felt so, it so, it felt so like I wasn't sure how I was supposed to act. And I don't like, man, when I can't just be me, I just, oh, God, I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, it's not a fun experience. Well, Jeremy, I want to thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure having you, sir. And uh, Glad to be here. I can't wait to see uh, what you do next with Miles. We'll definitely be eagerly waiting for that. Yes, oh, yes, indeed. Don't, yeah, yeah, we're I've cooking. Done. We're cooking yeah. stuff up. We're cooking yes, stuff we are. up. Really awesome. unique, really, really, really cool stuff. Awesome. Uh, well, I appreciate well, you guys having me on. Oh, totally. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Uh, probably Twitter at Sir Jeremy London. Cool. Because Thanks. apparently I've been knighted. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so, sir. Rightfully so. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Uh, and I got that link in the show notes up above or down below. And uh, we'll let you, you go, good uh, sir. Yeah. You know, um, I just I want to tell everybody also that that my lady and I we have a, a company called London's Most Wanted. And uh, if you guys like if you guys like uh, pepper jelly. We we have a garden. We grow our own fresh peppers, and we make the like it's literally like the world's best pepper jelly, and uh, uh, all of these different like you know banana nut breads and like just all kinds of stuff. Oh. You go to London's Most Wanted on on uh, Etsy. You'll see all nice. of the stuff that we uh, we we make, and uh, I make it most of it all myself. It's all uh, you know homegrown and homemade, and uh, uh, it's it's been pretty cool. So it's London's Most Wanted. And you can also check us out. We have our own YouTube channel too, London's Most Wanted on YouTube. And uh, my stepson and I just did the one chip challenge, the Pocky one chip challenge. Have you guys seen that? Ever seen that? Where it's like the hottest. Oh, like, oh yeah. Like the hottest chip in the world. Yeah, and, one uh, chip. Well, yeah, and so we're we're gonna be doing the duel next, which is actually hotter than that. But uh, but uh, you know, a lot of fun stuff on there and cooking videos. I'm a sort of fledgling chef, and so you can see me cooking some stuff. You can see our garden and just all this different stuff. But. London's most wanted. 
throw that plug in there. But Miles, thanks for having me, buddy. Uh, uh, once again, you know, anytime I can be here for you, I can because I love you and uh, I love Miles' movies and I'm honored to be a part of them. And I can't wait for you guys to see what we have coming up next. We can't wait. Love you, brother. Man. And he's absolutely right about that pepper jelly, folks. There's a sweet kind and a hot kind. They're both exquisite depending upon your taste. London's most wanted. Check out that pepper jelly. Thank yeah, you, sir. Jeremy. I appreciate that. Thank we'll you. Thank you. Out. See you, Jeremy. Thank you. you guys Thanks. have a good one, man. Take care. Uh, gotta, right. Thank you, Jeremy. You too. Lady, so she can. Right. So she can. Good luck. <laughs> uh, just real quick, like I'm a fat kid, and I went immediately to his page. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, that pecan crumble banana bread that he makes. Mm -hmm. That's getting purchased. It looks amazing. Uh, look, I'm telling you, the pepper jelly is the real deal, y'all. Oh, I, mean, I don't know. I'm, 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 get... I'm a big pepper jelly fan. I'm a big hot stuff fan. Um, yeah. And it's really great. I mean, grab yourself some brie, put that pepper jelly on top, a little crostini oh, wow. or whatever your pleasure might be. Yeah. Oh, What's my up? God. This looks good. Yep. Okay. So I, got, I know what I'm doing after the show. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I honestly have to say, when uh, when it ca came to watching this movie, um, just just the other night, uh, I was, I like I said, I was impressed altogether. Uh, I genuinely, uh, like, I'm sitting down with with my wife Dara, um, she uh, she honestly thought you were German, which, <laughs> which was saying company. something because yeah. my my wife's maiden name is Emschweiler, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so That's formidable. Uh, yeah, That's only formidable. slightly. Yeah, I, I maintain that it was some kind of swear many decades ago in Germany. Emschweiler. Emschweiler. It's it just I love screaming it. Yeah. You know, like meanwhile, I'm over here with powers. I mean, it doesn't quite ironically pack the same punch. But uh yeah, she she genuinely thought that that you were German and uh your your cadence and everything was superb. And I was listening to to you know to Jeremy just going off in German. I'm sitting there as somebody I went, you know, in high school, I took a foreign language. The foreign language I was forced to take was Latin for three I, years. I, I know that one as well. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's great for when I'm watching, like, science fiction or old-timey horror movies where they try to sneak stuff by you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, except it's me. So I'm like, ah, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. They just said it directly in Latin. Like, I watched a movie with her and somebody said something in Latin. I was like, I think... I'm pretty sure that they just called forth a shit monster that's about to attack from the <laughs> toilet. And she was like, there's no way that's about to happen. Sure enough, they literally said it word for word oh, in Latin. <laughs> and my brain just jumped right back to the National Latin exam. But like, I was sitting there and I was like, oh man, he's he's speaking German. And I took a 2,000 year old dead language that I can't speak to anybody in. So good for you guys. That was just <laughs> But oh, the ancient texts that you can read, Brandon. Oh yeah, I know. Like, man, if there were an opening for Indiana Jones, just in general, yeah, I'd be in there like swimwear. I mean, <laughs> a fat bald Indiana Jones, but in there nonetheless. <laughs> Actually, I highly recommend Lucretius De Rerum Natura on the nature of things, um, which is sort of an a, a, his treatise on Epicurean cosmology and philosophy. Uh, whether you read it in Latin, which of course you can, Brandon, and should. Uh, or in English, it's positively fascinating. And, and the way he basically approximates modern atomic theory um, uh, when that text was written is, is kind of unbelievable when you think about it. Anyway, that's a diversion, but you said Latin, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. It's, there I go, there I go. It's back always to in the, the forefront. Back to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was there, was there any um, particular reason why germany like aside from the the black forest but like why why like teutonic uh like mythology may have may have attracted you more to I mean, that the, locale the black forest was was big really loomed large in our decision and and the the lore surrounding the black forest but also for me i had some german and felt felt some facility with the language and the dialect um and and so uh, I wanted to be able to at least steward my cast based on some at least foundational understanding of the language. Um, I knew we would have to have a dialect coach, and and fortunately we were able to to make that happen. And then and then uh, Elena, if, who was elevated from a smaller role to a larger role based on a, a COVID scare that we had, 
where an actor flew in from LA, tested positive for COVID, and uh, the actor had not made it to set, so the protocols worked. So thank you, uh, Return to Work yeah. protocols. Um, but that forced us to juggle the cast in the middle of shooting, which was harrowing, but ultimately I think turned out in the best interest of the film. And that meant Elena had a much larger role to play and she was with us basically the whole time. And, and so having her there was just, um, it, was, it was huge. It was, it was an enormous boon for the film, but, but I didn't know I'd have that luxury at the time. I, I thought our dialect coach would be remote. And so I wanted it to be a language that I knew a little something about. And of the modern languages, uh, you know, G Germany is the one that I'm, I'm, German is the one I'm most comfortable with. Couple that with the, the mythology of the Black Forest and the Wild Hunt and Carnuno's Herne um, and their cults. And it just, it seemed like a no brainer to me. No, I mean, and you know what? I, that makes absolute perfect sense. Completely understand that. Um, the, and part of the reason why I ask is, um, and, and this may have just been a uh, 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 happy accident, as mm -hmm. Bob Ross used to like to say. <laughs> Um, but the fact of the matter that it takes place in Germany and you're dealing with this, this, this deity of, of the woods and the hunt, uh, the, the Jaggers and all that mm. is the, the fact that for me at any rate, I can't speak to anyone else, but for me, I felt like it really dovetailed connected with, uh, the idea of fairy tales altogether. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at the Grimm's and, and that sort of stuff. I mean, it's just another place where, when you're talking about, you know, creepy, terrifying, <laughs> dark stuff, uh, Germany's the place, baby. I mean, there's a, the, um, uh, I, you know, I don't know, but you're right. I mean, the fa the fairy tale element and the, the sort of dark, macabre fairy tale is yeah. something we 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 really wanted to to go all out with. Uh, and so Germany made a lot of sense in that regard as well. It plays. It, it plays. Yeah. I mean, right? Like I honest, honestly, while watching, it was like, oh, this, this seems like it definitely would have been up like Wilhelm and Jakob Grimm's alley. Like if there was a movie they'd watch nowadays, <laughs> they'd be, like, oh, okay. And and what's what's great too is with the setting being Germany, even though it's it's dark. And, mm. and it's macabre you, you're dealing with supernatural horror elements um it never oversteps into that area where it's um i guess the term is grimdark like dark for the sake of being dark yeah um which i've i've seen a lot in more modern especially independent horror movies mm -hmm. and it was very refreshing to see the focus still be on the the character interactions and the that uh, Robin story was forefront, and it wasn't losing itself to um, any uh, overzealous use of, of violence or, or or anything like that. Everything was very pointed and and um, masterfully used. It, it didn't feel gratuitous at, at, at any point. I, I'm I'm really glad you said that, Brendan uh, and uh, Brandon. Rather, I'm so sorry. And that huh. was. Uh, um, I think that a lot of indie filmmakers think that they have to either be so twisted and cynical and nihilistic or, or super gory or, or, or just be over the top gratuitous just to get on the map, to get seen, to get somebody's attention. And they do it oftentimes at the expense of story. And I think whatever it, whatever you're talking about, whether it's gore or nudity or or whatever, um, if it's just being done for gratuitous attention grabbing purposes and not in service of your story and your characters, it's not going to serve the the picture. Um, it, it's just going to come off as kind of grotesque uh, and unwieldy. Um, yeah. So so our so with our gore in this film, for example, we we really wanted to pick our battles and we wanted a few choice moments. We had some nice practical gore, but at the same time, we wanted those moments to be in the service of the story. Um, we didn't want to make a slasher film. We didn't want to make, you know, um, body horror film or something like that. It was just about making people squirm. We wanted those moments to really explode off the screen and to, and to feel like they had been earned. Um, so I think you're, I think Brandon, you're 100% correct. Too many, too many indie, indie filmmakers 
try too hard to go as dark and nasty as possible, you know, and, and you understand their motivation. You understand why they want to do it. Of course, so, of course. So hard as an indie filmmaker to just, just to get seen, you know, to find any kind of audience and you, sure. you don't have the money and the resources to compete with the studios. So you've, you've got it. So, so how am I going to, how am I going to get our movie out there? How many, how am I going to get my name out there? And, and so, you know, you throw a lot of stuff at the wall and you think in horror, well, they want to see gore or they want to see nudity or they, or we want to try to outdo one another in, in our level of cynicism, skepticism, nihilism, and just bleakness. <laughs> um, but I, for me, it's, you know, I teach screenwriting here. I'm at, I'm at Loyola university where I, where I teach and, and story is paramount. Um, and the story's a thing. And if you lose sight of that, you, you're lost. Yeah. Now, uh, how, how did you, uh, get Rachel Nichols, uh, involved? That's pretty awesome, actually. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up Rachel. Um, I was, Rachel and I had a little, uh, virtual reunion today talking on Howard Gorman's show talking to Howard from Spain, which is, which is great. That's an interview that's going to air down the line. Um, I've been a fan of Rachel Nichols for, for some time now um, and admired her work in stuff like Criminal Minds or, or the J.J. Abrams Star Trek or, or Man in High Castle, uh, Continuum. Titans. Titans. I didn't see it, but I hear it's great. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we were looking for an actor who had the ability to portray power and dynamism, but at the same time was really empathetic and, and had this really underlying vulnerability in humanity. And Rachel certainly ha had that. And so our casting director, Brandy Goldman, had cast Rachel in something and suggested Rachel. And I said, oh, man, she's perfect. But, you know, she, she's not going to do our movie. Can we possibly afford her? Um, and, and Brandy said, well, I mean, you know, what do we have to lose? which is sort of the, the motto of the indie filmmaker. What's the worst that can happen? They say um, no, right? <laughs> uh, well, whether it's casting or on set, you know, just, I always say, what's the worst that can happen? If we try this dumbass thing. Um, so uh, we reached out to Rachel uh, and sent her the script and, and made her an offer. And she had not done a film since the pandemic began. Um, yet she chose to take a leap of faith, take a chance on our little indie film. And, and man, I'm so glad she did. She's wonderful in the film. Um, we hit it off fast and furious right off and Rachel and, and so did uh, Rachel and my wife, Lindsay, who's such an integral part of the film. And, um, she was great too, by the way. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. She was. She was thank so you very good. much. She's one of the most talented people I've ever met. Um, I can't believe I, I've earned the right to live with her day in and day out. Um, but, um, but yeah, Rachel, uh, is really spectacular in this film and she really, she's, she's in nearly every scene in the movie. Um, and so if you're a Rachel Nichols fan, I, I urge you to check it out. This is, this is a really top notch, uh, Rachel Nichols performance, fearless Rachel Nichols performance. And, and we were, I'm incredibly gratified that she took a chance on our film. Very cool. And I want to remind everybody is Demigod is coming out October 15th on uh, VOD and you said physical as well, correct? Uh, oh, 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 uh, at the theater. This, yeah. So it's, so it's uh, select theaters and on demand October 15th. So it's in about 10 cities, Los Angeles, Dallas, Detroit, Seattle, Boston, Cleveland, uh, New Orleans, uh, two cities in Mississippi in close proximity to where we shot Hattiesburg, Mississippi, D'Iberville, Mississippi. And there might be a couple more I'm forgetting about, but, but if you are in any of those cities where you have the opportunity to see it on the big screen, if you feel comfortable doing so, I urge people to go out and see it on the big screen. We shot it to be seen on the biggest screen possible. Um, it, like I said, we shot anamorphic, uh, Nate tape, our DP did a fantastic job. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and with the, the best sound possible again, uh, thanks to Clifton Hyde's incredible score. Um, and, uh, but, but if you don't feel comfortable going to the theater just yet, or it's not in your city, you know, check it out on all of the so-called per click sites, iTunes, Amazon, Google play, Fandango now, and those guys. And then if you're, if you're a physical media type person, which I totally get, I'm a vinyl guy. Uh, you know, I love to be able to hold the, the analog thing in your hand. Um, Blu-ray DVD release is December 14th, December awesome. 14th. 
Very cool. We'll look forward to that. I, I know. You, well, uh, oh, hold on. Leo, I got a really important question related yeah, okay. to that. Yeah. Um, what are the extras? You can have like a director's commentary or anything cool like that on it? Well, that's not up to me. Our, our distributor, Gravitas Ventures, makes those decisions. So we're, we're talking about uh, what, what might be on it. I mean, I, I, I love doing director's commentary. I, you know, we shot a music video for the closing credit song, um, in the film that we're working on. Um, but you know, the, those things are, there's a cost associated with putting them on the Blu-ray DVD. So I, I have to defer to the, the bosses at the distributor, uh, on that one. So we'll see. We'll see. I just, I just love that you shot a music video, like to go yeah. with, with the movie that's well, yeah I, I love that one of the things clifton and i always do uh, with our films uh, it, whenever our time energy and budget um allows is we write an original song uh for our films so uh the that's last cool. one dinner party uh we wrote a song called ash wednesday which plays over the closing credits and this one uh clifton and a wonderful young composer named armand vivici and myself wrote a song called conjuring song which plays over the closing credits of Demigod. And yes, we not too long ago shot a music video for it. So we're, we're in the process of editing and, and, and putting that one together now. I hope we get to get to see it at some point. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. We'll blast it out somewhere when it's ready. Yep. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, one last question, actually two. I, I know you got to go real quick. I uh, love the choice of the dialogue with the, uh, the horned man. Mm. Uh, you don't really see that too often. It's just like, okay, we'll throw a mask on and just grunt, you know, just <laughs> absolutely. And, and the voice, how you sound, how, I, I'm sure the sound engineer was, uh, was a genius that you had. Just the way you sounded was amazing. Uh, but last question I want to ask you is uh, what, what's next on your list, Miles? Well, um, the two things in response to what you just yep. said. First, yep. Ch Chima Chek was performance as Kernunos. A lot of that voice is him, and it's his. It his. It's his work. We, uh, because he was wearing a prosthetic, we couldn't use a lot of the dialogue on the day. Um, but uh, we re-recorded the dialogue after the fact um, with my wonderful, wonderful post sound mixer and friend John Vogel, who has been the post sound mixer on every single one of my features, and he does wonderful work. Uh, out of his studio at Apex Post Production in New Orleans, Louisiana. So uh, many and sincere thanks uh, to both Chima for his lovely performance and to John uh, for his hard work on the film. Um, what am I up to next? So, um, well, um, we, have, uh, Lindsay and I have just com completed a new script, which um, I, I like to say, if you were to take um, a Noah Baumbach film, Marriage Story, um, a Wong Kar Wai film, like In the Mood for Love or 2046 or Chunking Express, um, a Wes Anderson film, you know, Royal Tenenbaums, uh, and an 80s, like like vintage 80s new wave music video, like Duran Duran or Flock of Seagulls or something like that. Put them all in the blender and blended it up and made, made yourself a little concoction. That's this movie. Um, it's bonkers. It, it's... it's um, I, some of it was was driven by my want to go back to sort of my roots in character drama. Um, my first film is a chamber drama set in academia called The Historian. Um, and I wanted to do something. I wanted not not totally move away from horror because this new script has a sort of a thriller uh, edge. Um, but a, a lot of it also had to do with um, me promising Jeremy London to write him a leading role in something. He'd played these smaller roles nice. in my last couple of films. And he was like, Miles, you got to write me a lead. So, so That's I fair, like, right? So I was like, "Okay, Jeremy, you asked for it." Um, so, <laughs> so we're cooking that up, and 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 hopefully, I won't give you the title because it will probably change three or four times at least. Uh, but but hopefully, we get to shoot that one next year. Um, and look, we're we're just about continuing to make movies and continuing to put stuff out there, and uh, and continuing to support indie indie film production in Mississippi and Louisiana. Um, at like Jeremy, I'm a teacher and we, we provided opportunities for a handful of my students on Demigod who, who, you know, r really learned how, how tough it can be, uh, shooting night exteriors in, you know, 20 degree weather, um, in the dead of winter, uh, with COVID protocols hanging over your head. And I mean, to talk, talk about trial by fire. But I'm I'm a big believer that you learn by doing. I mean, I know that I'm a better director after six features than I was after the first one. So, um, 
we're going to keep doing what we do, we do, and and we hope that people will support what we do. And I would just say, uh, in closing, uh, if you watch our film and you like it uh, or anything about it uh, at all, please leave us a short review somewhere on IMDb or on Amazon or iTunes or whatever the platform of your choice is. It really helps. We we don't have the money or the resources, like I said, to compete with the studios and their marketing machine. So it's it's grassroots. Um, it's it's about word of mouth for us, and and good folks like you guys uh, are are a huge help covering our film. Um, so watch Demigod. Go on one of those platforms or two of those platforms and say something nice about our film. Um, it, it can be very short, one sentence. It, it can be. I loved Clifton Hyde's score, it was amazing, or I loved the cinematography, or great anamorphic flair, whatever. You don't have to write a, a novella. Um, but, but those things really do matter, both positive and negative, I should say. So if, you get, if, you're, you know, if you're a little pissed off at the day you had, and you watch the film, and it doesn't strike you right, and you go on and write a negative diatribe, that matters too. So, so just keep that in mind. Well, do. Well, Miles, uh, we, we like, I can't, can't say it enough. We love everything you do. Can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, wh where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Miles underscore Doliac. So my name, like it's written on the uh, panel there, uh, at Miles underscore Doliac. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of what I post is, um, you know, saints, related i'm a big new orleans saints fan so you know little, yeah a little upset I, okay. yeah, <laughs> new england patriots man okay yeah i was i was pulling for the patriots last night and they couldn't pull it off no, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but uh i mean nor, nor could my saints yesterday um despite being up 11 with seven minutes to go in the fourth but uh yeah i post a lot of saints related material and dog related material like i said lens and i have five dogs um, but I am posting a lot of demigod related material right now. So if you're interested in the the journey of demigod, check me out at underscore no at miles <laughs> underscore Doliac on Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. And I got those links in the show notes. Uh, real quick, I, I know he has uh, has to go. Philip, where do you like people interacting with you? Uh, darkdiscussions.com is the website and uh, they can interact with me on Facebook, uh, where I am under my own name, as well as, uh, the dark discussions podcast, Facebook group. Sounds good. Brandon, uh, you all can interact with me on Twitter at Brandon's powers and on Instagram at this Brandon has powers. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, uh, as a member of a group I started called powers combined, uh, it's a lot of fun. We're just a bunch of geeks get together talking about movies, comic books, television shows, share information, memes, have a few laughs. And our number one rule is don't be a jerk. If you violate that, you will be given the stanky boot immediately. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Come on, come on down. Price is right. That's an excellent rule, Brandon. Thank you. I don't came up with that all on my that's own. An excellent rule. Yeah. And uh, every single person that has ever violated it, which has not been many, has found out exactly how serious I was. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, get rid of the trolls. Get rid yeah, of the yeah. trolls. Totally. Yeah, Matter of fact, I blocked a bunch uh, during the show. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Beautiful I wanna, segue. Oh, totally. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, you know, my name is Leo Pond. Just Google me, uh, and I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. 40 shows on a network. Uh, actually, a little over 40 shows. Uh, a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. And with that, we'll catch you guys later. Bye.